So now transitioning from the engineering, let's talk about the foundation. Okay. We talked about the piers. Yep. So we know that in any building, one of the most critical structures is the foundation. Oh, no we got to build on a solid foundation. No doubt about so with that, I, there's some options that our customers bring to us that we see in the marketplace okay. that have been used. So the first one I want to bring to you here with this display is they're going to put the post in the ground. They're going to put one bag of dry sacrete in it, and they're going to fill the rest of it with dirt. Uh, yeah, so in this particular situation right here, just looking at this cutaway, the first thing I like to do is go back to the engineer drawing. Okay. So let's verify what are we actually after here. We know in this particular situation, we're after an 18 inch diameter by 36 inch deep foundation pier. Okay. So that's described right here in detail five, 18 inches by 36 inches. And we also know that number eight, if you look over in the legend, is calling for the 3,500 PSI concrete. Okay, so now when we look at this particular pier system, it's 18 inches wide. Okay. It is 36 inches deep, it looks like. So the size is right. The size is right. Um, it looks like what you're describing here is the one bag of sacrete that's been dry poured in the bottom. Right. Okay. Now, on top of that, it's just been backfilled with the dirt that was previously excavated for this hole. Right. Okay. So what they did here, they mounted the post in. They actually put the half inch rebar through, extended it through the post like it's called for in the drawing. Okay. But the rest of this is backfilled with dirt. So what's gonna happen in this situation, they're hoping that eventually enough water will make it all the way down here to maybe try to get this concrete to actually lock up. Okay. Uh, so number one, this will never ever achieve a 3,500 PSI. Not only will it never achieve it, it's never gonna be able to encapsulate this rebar for the uplift capability drawn on this drawing okay so the rest of this also what you have is dirt and water capability to constantly be in contact with this post below grade so this post right here if you get 10 years out of it you'll be lucky okay just to be quite honest okay. um this thing is constantly going to be saturated it's constantly going to have moisture it's constantly going to have water it's constantly going to have dirt and be subjected to whatever termites or whatever else is crawling through the dirt, this post will be subjected to all of that. Okay. If this post makes it 10 years, it'll be doing good. Okay. So what you're saying is from your explanation, this method does not meet engineering. This method does not meet the engineering for this particular situation. Okay. And question with that is, so is this something that Jackson Metal would be able to offer to a consumer, to a customer? We could not offer that due to the fact that we're going to have to be installing based on what this engineering is calling for. If you do not, then what you're actually selling the person, if you're selling them this drawing, then you have not actually installed what you sold. Okay. You've actually installed something different. Okay. So this is not a situation that Jackson Metal would ever install. Okay. This is also not a situation that we would advise any customer to install or any consumer to allow to be installed on their property. Okay. It's very important that when if let's say they're just purchasing it wherever or they have a general contractor or whomever to come install their kit or whatever the case is, number one, they're watching the auger and they're making sure that this pier is gonna be wide enough, okay. it's being augered deep enough. And not only that, that they're also ensuring that they are putting in a mixed concrete that matches the PSI required on the drawing. Okay. And that is being filled all the way. Otherwise, it's just not meeting the engineering. Okay. So one bag of dry mix sacrete and dirt is not going to work. No, sir. That, that's just not going to okay. work. So, Josh, now the next option we come up with that we're told is that they'll put the post in the ground. They'll completely encapsulate it in concrete, but it'll be a dry pour concrete. So can you speak to the strength of that? And does this meet engineering? Okay. So this is also a, a pretty common situation that we see in the marketplace today. In order to speak to that, I, typically what I like to do is refer back to the engineering of the drawing. Okay. Um, you know, because I'm not an engineer. We're just the installer. So that's right. That's right. You know, and so really when we look back at it, we look back at the, the foundational pier. We go back. We know that it's required to have 3,500 PSI concrete, totally encapsulating the post with the rebar extending through the post into both sides of the concrete. So... When we look at this system, what this is, is this is a half cutaway. This 
is an 18 inch by 36 inch mm -hmm. diameter pier hole. Right, right. Or half of it. What we've done here is to put this in here and then flood it, saturate it with water. From the top. From the top. Okay. So we poured it from the top. We saturated this. We watered it until water just ran over the sides of it. And we kept doing it to simulate a rain or simulate, let's say, a customer or a contractor or someone just kind of pouring water over the hole okay. after it had been backfilled with concrete. So what you have is a lot of this is hard, okay? It's hard in a lot of various different places, even down at the bottom. It even got hard at the bottom, but you still also have some areas, as you can see it falling here, as it locked up in the top, it just couldn't quite get to some of these areas. Yeah, th this feels just like dry concrete out of the bag. It is, and eventually, eventually, maybe it would actually get hard. This particular mix, though, will never, ever achieve 3,500 PSI. The reason for that is the way that the Portland actually reacts with the water and this cement makes the mix, okay? So what happened here is instead of all this being equally distributed and the water being equally distributed and the Portland reacting properly with the concrete here, it was just poured over. So in some areas you had more Portland, some areas you had less Portland, some areas it reacted properly, some areas it did not react properly. Okay. In this particular situation where you have your actual rebar that's extending through the post out into the concrete on either side, one side reacted and got hard, one side's actually still powdery, even though this right here is hard. So it will sporadically kind of go through. The problem with that is in a strong wind when you're in, in experiencing strong uplift needing to be a strong uplift, this is actually right here probably going to break away from the bottom of the pier. And it's probably going to allow this thing just to come out. Okay. So the long or short of that, when you look, if you really look at the engineer drawing, even though there is concrete all around it, this is not a 3,500 PSI concrete mix. And that's because it was not mixed equally with water before it was poured in. That's exactly right. So this right here, I would say still, even though it's a little bit better than what a lot of the marketplace is calling a posting ground application where there's just kind of a rule of thumb, one bag of sacrete in the bottom back filled with dirt. It's yes. a better application than that. It still does not actually meet the engineered requirements for this particular structure. Okay. So this particular method does not meet engineering for this building. It would not. Therefore, no. it's not advisable. Not, not in this situation. No, it's not. And Josh, so here we have the third option, okay. which looks really good. So it looks like this post is completely encapsulated in concrete. So can you explain to me the benefits of this? Okay. So with this system right here, you can see this, this concrete obviously was mixed before it was put into the pier hole. Uh, you can see the half inch rebar extends through the post out into either side of it in this cutaway. So it's actually extending into the concrete. The concrete has now fully enveloped this rebar and it is all one unified system at this point. So this right here does meet the requirements. So this is an 18 inch by 36 inch deep pier. Okay. That is what's required right here, number eight. You can see right here, it's an 18 inch by 36 inch foundational pier. Okay. That's what's required right here. That's actually what is going on. The 3,500 PSI that's required for the concrete mix this system right here being pre-mixed and ordered from a concrete company, a ready mix company at 3,500 PSI, this should meet that. And I say should because the only way to actually be 100% definite would be to take a core sample and send it off for compressive testing. At that time, they will apply 3,500 PSI to that core sample to verify that it is. Now, to be honest, let's just face it, every consumer is not gonna send off a core sample to verify that the PSI, their foundation is, you know, 3,500 if they're doing a hay barn or if they're doing something just to cover some of their toys or tractors or something like that. Right. However, this being mixed all the way has now fully encompassed the post. It's also fully encompassed the uplift rebar that's actually drilled through here. And it's going to keep out about 90% of any water. Okay. In this particular application, because we were just building a cutaway form, this thing is flat. 
Typically, you would like for this concrete to actually ride up a little bit as it got to the post. And what that'll do is any water or rain that comes in on an open building, it'll it'll flush that away. Okay. okay. It'll let that water route away from the post. And it's going to try to keep any water from wanting to get down in any cracks or anywhere to try to rot this post out. You still can't see it below grade, so you have to assume that this post is or is not rotting. But the best case situation is this right here. This post is fully enveloped by the concrete. Nothing can really get to it. Okay. So with this, this concrete pour width, 3,500 PSI, the pier depth is accurate. This meets the required engineering for this structure, yes? Yes, for this structure that was engineered by a state of Georgia engineer with this type of pier system, this does meet that. This is an appropriate installation. Yes, it is. So we would say this is an approved method by Jackson Metal. It is an approved method by Jackson Metal. It's an approved method by James Joseph Kramer, this engineer right here. And you know, You'll see a lot of different engineering on a lot of different of these different post frame type structures. They're all going to be very similar, right. but this is an approved installation. Yes, it is. Okay, Josh. So this is another option, which, uh, which we have a bracket here, a wet set bracket okay. set in concrete. Could you explain this, please? Okay. So this right here, what this is called is a no rot post system. So again, okay. we have the 18 inch by 36 inch deep pier foundation. So we're getting still the proper pier foundation system for the proper uplift. Okay. It is also a pre-mix at a 3,500 PSI okay. as required by the drawing here. The difference that's gonna go on here is instead of this post actually going all the way down inside of here, this post is gonna stop here and this bracket is actually gonna be encapsulated fully by the concrete here. Okay. So this bracket actually meets the required uplift capabilities that was going to be by the post and the rebar extending into the concrete. Okay. So this is actually going to be a little bit of a better option to have here because what you're not ever going to have is a post below grade. Okay. So you don't have to wonder or worry that there may be termites or there may be water or something like that going into the wood that would actually be on a lot of the post frame structures. All of this is going to be above grade right here. So you can give quick, easy visual inspections. You can know whether or not your post is in bad repair. The other thing is if you, let's say you run into it with a tractor or you have animals, or I've actually come to jobs that have where horses have almost ate all the okay. way through the okay. post, surprisingly <laughs> enough, but I've seen it. Um, it's a situation where you can just support the truss up, unbolt here, unbolt up at the truss, take the post out, put another post back in and go on about your business. Okay. The whole process will take about two hours to swap a post out with this particular system. This is a system like, it's called an exclusive no rot post system Okay. for post frame structures. We do have the engineering on this bracket as well. So these plus this drawing will all be in conjunction submitted to the county for permit approval Okay. for the project there. So this is a, a fully approved Jackson metal procedure, we would say here. It, it is. sounds like it's got some maintenance options with the post, just in case anybody it has a little accident right there. <laughs> uh, it keeps yeah. us from having to cut concrete. A, it does. The post is never going to be in contact or encapsulated in any type of moisture. Therefore, it's going to last longer. It's not going to rot. It is, yes. And so we would say this is the preferred method for Jackson metal, yes? It is the preferred method. It's also the standard. This comes as a standard option for most of our buildings. Okay. So this is not an upgrade. This is not anything you have to pay extra for. This is actually a standard because we don't want to have a problem or any situation where a customer's post may be rotted or something happening to it below ground that they don't know about. Okay. So this is actually a standard. It doesn't cost the customer anything. I encourage a lot of the customers as they're getting pricing to just verify exactly what kind of foundation system they're getting. Because as you can see in the marketplace, there's a lot of different options out there. Some of them actually meet requirements. So a lot of them don't. Very good, very good. So with this, this sounds like this is a high value option for us. Oh, no doubt about it. Okay. There's no doubt about that. All right. Thank you very much.